Hello, this is Minister Leonard Harris to our Pleasant Green Church family and other listeners. Again, this is a privilege and an opportunity to share with you our lesson for this Sunday, March the 26th, 2023, Lesson 4, and it is entitled, One with a Mental Illness. And our devotional reading will be found in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 6. And our background scriptures are Mark, the 5th chapter, verses 1 through 20. And Luke, the 8th chapter, verses 26 through 39. And our printed passage is Mark, the 5th chapter, verses 1 through 13, and also 18 through 20. Our key verse is the man went away and began to tell in Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and all the people were amazed. Our lesson's aims are compare and contrast contemporary symptoms and consequences of mental illness with those experienced by the man in Mark's story. Also, confess the ways that you or your churches misjudge or stigmatize people. Raise awareness in the community of services available for treating mental illness. And our lesson has three parts to it. A cry for help, a command that healed, and a commission to proclaim. A cry for help, a command that healed, and a commission to proclaim. Now, before we begin to uh, indulge ourselves into our lesson from the Faith Pathway Study uh, Booklet, we will go before the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father and Creator of all that is, we bow our heads in submission to Thee and ask that You would unfold to us the meaning of Your lesson, impart unto us the things that You would have us to know, and we ask that after you have revealed to us the substance of your lesson, that you would compel us by your spirit that we would be doers of your word and not just hearers alone. And we'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory that is due unto thee. And we ask it all in the name of Christ, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. Our lesson uh, focuses on a situation or a condition that is growing in our community or in our nation. Um, one dealing with uh, mental illness. And mental illness, uh, a situation that uh, appears uh, from studies and from uh, information that has been developed, that it seems it has lied dormant. It was ever present but not acknowledged and not attended to. And therefore, uh, 
with the recent attention and uh, with the recent indulgence to find more out about mental illness and its symptoms and uh, how it affects different individuals. Uh, now we have uh, more uh, talk and conversation and more people are coming forth and there is more of an involvement into addressing mental illness than what we have ever seen uh, in our country. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, is, it may be enlightening, and at the same time it may be uh, alarming to some, but uh, for those who are um, the ones who are afflicted by the mental illness, it is a uh, attention and uh, it is the attraction uh, to the topic, which for them is long overdue. And uh, our lesson uh, identifies uh, some of the uh, denial that it exists and the lack of attention and services to address the issue. And in our lesson, it opens uh, by, in the biblical context of the lesson, it opens with Mark uh, proclaiming a scripture in the 10th chapter of Mark and the 45th verse, uh, which says, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Uh, also, this uh, is found in the book of Matthew uh, in the 20th chapter of Matthew, uh, and it starts at verse 25. So Matthew 20, 25 through 28. And there it makes a distinction. It it speaks about how that among the Gentiles, they had a practice of lording. It says rulers of the Gentiles had a practice of lording over them. And those who were great experienced authority, or I'm sorry, exercised authority over them. But here Christ makes the distinction. He said, yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever deserves or whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your servant. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, uh, a difference here in the uh, contrast of this is that a lot of times people in position of authority or rulers or uh, even uh, uh kings or, or presidents or people that uh, are assigned uh, positions uh, to exercise authority. Many times they display a behavior or attitude that those to whom they are commissioned to serve should actually bow down to them in service. And Christ in the King James is said, minister. Christ did not come to be ministered to, but to minister. And a good way to uh, address that and give more clarity to it is when one ministers, it is a form of administration. 
it is a form of administering to a need. So therefore, Christ, in the opening of the biblical context here, Christ came to provide a need. Christ recognized the need, and Christ came to provide that need. Uh, I believe it's in the ninth chapter of Matthew. I think it's at the uh, 37th verse, uh, which says that the uh, harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers. And so we are at a time uh, where we, uh, maybe we have always been at a time where we need more laborers to serve the people. Speaking of the harvest is plentiful, the need is ever present. And there are multiple needs. So now our lesson, A Cry for Help, it begins by telling us of the man that is uh, obsessed, not obsessed, but the man is possessed by evil spirits, uh, referred to as the demoniac, uh, a man possessed of demons. And in our verses 1 through 7, uh, it says that uh, Jesus was in the region of Gerasenes. And when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. And this man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore not even with chains. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. And night and day among the tombs in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. And he shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me? Jesus, Son of the Most High God, in God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus has said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Now, at the beginning, one of the purposes of the lesson uh, was to contrast and compare the uh, symptoms and the consequences of the man who was possessed uh, uh, in the scripture. Currently, with those who suffer from mental illness today. And uh, when we look at this, uh, we see quite a few similarities and parallels uh, with the actual uh, response from people who suffer from mental illness. And it also spoke about uh, the church uh, stigmatizing uh, people based upon uh, the uh, illness of mental illnesses. And so what, what we see here is, first of all, is when the dwelling of the man, it said the man was in tombs. Uh, well, these were not tombs in the sense of burial places, but tombs in the uh, understanding of dwellings in hillsides. They were caves in hillsides. They were uh, somewhat remote or they were removed uh, dwelling places from 
the larger community. So one of the things we see is that the man that was in need of help was removed from help that was available. So the man was cast out into an isolated area and then left and restricted. The man had been chained. It appears as though the lesson says that uh, it, this uh, part of restraining or constraining the man had been done several times because it mentions that he would break the chains and the ankle bracelets. He would break the constrictions on his body. Um, and it appears more than once. So people were in contact with the man suffering from the possession of impure spirits. People recognized that the man had issues, but rather than addressing them, they chose to restrain the man and to remove him from the presence of the larger community. And what we see today in our society, in this nation, we see that people who suffer from different symptoms and behavioral patterns associated with mental illness are living in abandoned buildings. Buildings without the functioning of utilities, no water, no gas, no electricity. And so they are dark, they are abandoned. Many of them are boarded up. And so um, they are isolated. They are in areas that are not habitable for human uh, existence nor are they in areas that are populated by the larger community. So there is a comparison with the man in Scripture according to the dwelling of the man and also how uh, people with these issues are, are responded to by the larger community. And there is in your spare time, uh, there was a uh, panel discussion. Uh, it's referred to as the Round Table on Young Black Men. This uh, panel discussion was actually um, uh, those in, particip uh, in participation uh, that were present on the panel discussion were uh, Susan Rice, and uh, she is the domestic policy advisor to the Biden administration. Uh, she, along with others, served on this panel discussion. A, uh, the Surgeon General was there. Also, the uh, Dr. Arthur Evans from uh, American Psychological Association. And there were two young black men there, Naheem Banks and Miles Noble. And they were two young men who had been counseled and been going through treatment for the ills of mental illness. And one of the things that they both cited was how their condition is responded to by the larger community. They spoke often about how they were afraid to identify what they were dealing with uh, to uh, family members or friends at school or people in general. They always felt that as soon as they find out what I'm dealing with, their response will be that I'm crazy, uh, I've lost my mind, that, uh, oh man, they do all kind of weird and, and crazy things, and, and, no, and it would become like a joke. I w my situation would be responded to as though rather than offering, uh, oh, 
There are some services that are available to you. If you go to uh, this location, they can help you. Uh, so their, their hesitance or reluctance to explaining uh, what they were dealing with is one of the obstacles in the way of people who have different symptoms and forms of mental illness. This is one of the obstacles that renders them unsuccessful in getting the help that they need. And so when we look at comparisons of situations present in our community and among us today, these are the things that our young people are dealing with. And I would highly recommend that uh, you access YouTube. Uh, the video is referred to as the Round Table of Young Black Men. It is chaired by, again, Susan Rice, the domestic policy advisor for the Biden administration. And just look at the stats uh, and also listen to the testimony of the two men that are present on the panel. Uh, it will be very informative, also very helpful in understanding uh, what situations are before us today. Uh, one of the things I wanted to lift out of this is that night and day, the man cried and the people in the townships could hear the man's anguish and agony. And they could hear how he was being tormented by the possession of the demons. Uh, and yet, they had grown accustomed to hearing this and dealing with it and not responding to it. And so... What we see is, is that there are certain behaviors that we physically see and even hear. And we grow accustomed to it's uh, just a, a, a part of the many facets of life. And we just uh, have grown to the point where we're like... Um, desensitized to it and that impedes our response and our serving method towards addressing it so what we see a point and I'm not going to uh, dwell long in each uh, of the different sections of our lesson but I did want to share this it says uh, after the first uh, eight verses, uh, now we recognize that Jesus gives a, a address, the demon addresses Christ, knows who Christ is. The demons recognize the salvation. Even in homage, they bow down at the feet of Christ and beg that the punishment that they recognize is due them for the possession of this soul that they have tormented. They asked Christ uh, not to torture them. Though they have punished the soul of an individual, the demon asks that you don't punish us. Don't torture us. And yet Christ responds, come out of this man, you impure spirit. Now, I wanted to read this because I think this is very insightful for us. Uh, down in the commentary, in the second paragraph of our uh, outline of our lesson, it says, although the narrative fluctuates between the man and the demon's personalities, we recognize that he was crying out for help and release. Humanity's methods failed and doomed him to a living death. So we look at the response 
of humanity. Humanity chose to keep the man isolated, not to provide any companionship to the man, not to provide any services to the man, but to just allow him to dwindle and slowly die in the agony of the possession of the impure spirits. And so when we look at what is the church's position, how are we addressing this? Many churches have engaged in networking with uh, different agencies that are out here to uh, provide the assistance uh, to equip the church members. Again, the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few, but to equip the laborers in the church so that we understand the need that is present and how to address it without insulting the people who are uh, suffering from the illness. And so uh, we need more of this. We need more training. Uh, we need more of the uh, people who deal with this on a regular basis to attend and provide seminars to equip us and to educate us on how to respond. Now, our second section of our lesson says, a command that healed. And here, Jesus identifies what is the name of the demon. What is the name of the demon? And the demon responds by saying that my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. But a large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside, and the demon begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. And Jesus gave them permission, gave the legion, gave the possession of many permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Now, the word legion, and I'm sure if you've read into the lesson, recognize that the word legion identifies, uh, it is a Latin word, and it means, uh, uh, or in reference to a Roman uh, army or regiment or battalion of 6,000 soldiers. And so what we recognize here is, is that the impure spirit was in multiple forms. There was not just one demon, but many. And this also helps us to understand that many people suffering from mental illness, they have uh, varying symptoms. They have different manifestations of their illness. Uh, we, in the first set, uh, eight verses, we found that the man had a practice of cutting himself with stones. And that is one of the symptoms of the anguish that people are suffering from mental illness display that uh, they cut themselves, they harm themselves, they uh, enact physical damage to themselves. And others are that they are prone to addiction, uh, drug addictions, because they're trying to be released. As in our lesson, the demons asked that Christ would uh, remove them and uh, release them into the herd of pigs. And so uh, these are different functions 
different behavioral patterns that are present when many are consumed by alienated spirit, evil spirits, impure spirits that cause us as people to do things that are out of the norm, that uh, are recognized as they are responding uh, in a fashion that is not normal. Uh, when we look at the lesson, there's a part here that we definitely uh, must identify. And that is under the second part of our lesson, a command that healed. Uh, so I would like to just read it out aloud. It says, in the middle part of the paragraph, it says, Aware that Jesus' command to leave the man was imminent. The demon knew that their stay, that their possession of this individual was not forever. Evil knows that their reign, that their presence in the earth is not forever. The devil knows that there is a time that the return of Christ ends the devastation that evil has practiced upon humanity. So it says that aware that Jesus' command to leave the man was imminent, all of them begged permission to be sent into a nearby herd of swine to avoid eternal consignment and retain freedom to be used by Satan. Let me read that again. All of them, the legion, the 6,000, they all begged permission to be sent into a nearby herd of swine to avoid eternal consignment and retain freedom to be used by Satan. Yet, again, we see evil's tenacity and intentionality to destroy and dishonor all of God's creation. Jesus granted their request. They left the man and possessed a herd of about 2,000 pigs. Now, the text doesn't explain why Jesus permitted this. However, Jesus wanted to demonstrate that these demons were real. Sometimes we judge people and we say, even though we can see sometimes the physical harm, we say they're just doing that to get attention. They're just doing these things because uh, they feel neglected. So they're, they're pretending. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with them. They just, you know, uh, they always want everybody focused on them and watching and looking at them. So it says that uh, Jesus demonstrate that the demons were real and that the man's deliverance was genuine. When they, once they recognized what, by being released, they did to the pigs. Now, when the pigs died and drowned in the water coming off of the cliff, the demons were released again. And so here, where it talked about so that the demons would retain freedom to be used by Satan, they left one embodiment and consumed another. And when that body embodiment was killed, they, the evil spirit again was released. But in the end of our lesson, here is an important part for us to focus upon. 
And that is our verses going from 18 through 20. And it says that as Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in Decapolis. And the Decapolis is a, a word translating into uh, 10 Greek cities. And so this geographical location was uh, today, the present location would be in Syria, Turkey, and Jordan. And so these were Greek colonies or Greek uh, cities. And so it says, and much Jesus had done, I mean, to tell in Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and all the people were amazed. Now, when we look at the verses that are missing, so in your spare time, if you read uh, from 13 and read into 18, you will find uh, in the fifth chapter of Mark, you will find that the people, they were amazed. They were astonished at what Christ had done, but their response was not one of reception, but their response was one of departure. After they recognized that Christ had freed this man from the possession of the impure spirits or demons, and they saw the change of the man, much of their focus was upon what happened to the herd of pigs. And because of them seeing the magnitude of what Christ was able to do, they asked Christ to leave. Rather than recognizing that this man has done something in our midst that none of us were able to do, we see how he restored this man to normalcy, to normalcy. So he, it, it says that rather than giving a, a reaction of praise and honor and recognition, in fear, they asked him to leave. And much is sometimes our response when we see the work of Christ, the work of God being done, unfortunately, in our society today. Uh, people are not always receptive and not always uh, in honoring the work that's done to those who are afflicted with the uh, fall of humanity. Um, everyone is not receptive to seeing that uh, people are restored, that their illness has been uh, lifted, that the anguish and agony that they feel, the physical harm that they bring upon themselves, that these things, these characteristics, these behaviors have been removed Everyone in our society is not receptive to this. Everyone doesn't want to see it, and everyone doesn't practice it. And what we have to be mindful of is, are we, as believers, are we, as the church, are we practicing it? Well, we hope that something has been said that would bring some understanding to our scripture for today. And as always, our prayer is that the Lord will continue to bless us, to keep us, and to make us 
to develop us into the people he would have us to be in this day and time. God be with you, before you, and always, most importantly, in you.